Hello and welcome to a creative writing and poetry workshop from Hastings Museum and Art Gallery. This is part of Hastings Digital Museum and my name is Dan Simpson. I'm going to be your poet and your workshop leader for the writing we're going to do today. It's really lovely to have you here. All you're going to need to write is a pen and paper or if you prefer to write on a device or a laptop, grab that and get ready to go. I'm a really big fan of being inspired by other kinds of art forms. And for me, I'm particularly inspired by visual art, particularly modern visual art. We're going to look at a piece of art that the gallery has on display, and we're going to use it as inspiration for our own writing today. So I'm going to show you this image on the screen, a painting that Hastings Museum and Art Gallery has, and it's going to inspire us to do our writing. So the first thing I'd like you to do as you're looking at this painting is simply respond to it with whatever comes up. What do you think this image depicts? I'd like you to make notes on what you see generally. Then think about the colours. Think about the circle shapes you're seeing within this image. Thinking about the lines, perhaps this radiant burst that happens across. Maybe these swooshes of yellow and colour that are moving across the image. What's going on in these darker cloud parts? Then I'd like you to think about how this image makes you feel. Make some notes on that. And finally, what do you think is happening in this painting? All of those prompts should be up on the screen. And if you'd like to pause the video here, I'll give you some time to actually make some notes on all of those prompts. Maybe take five or six minutes or so, and then come back to the next part of the workshop. So welcome back. You spent some time with this fantastic image that is part of the gallery in Hastings. This is actually called Earth's Awakening by George Graham, and it's from 1937, an interesting point in history. Now, Graham was an artist who lived at Winchelsea Beach near Hastings, and this painting comes from the creation series he created near the end of his life. And this is actually held in the museum, so it's a real piece of local art and art history. It's a vision of the universe being created, and particularly Earth. So Graham was a landscape painter originally, and his pictures are fairly straightforward. You, you'd look at them and think it's pretty standard landscape. But this image that we've just looked at is completely fantastical, very different. And maybe we'd even say it was more imaginative and creative than a simple depicted landscape. These paintings came from the last 10 years of his life. I find this really interesting how, as an artist, his process moved on uh, when he felt perhaps more emboldened um, as he got older, maybe thinking a little more reflectively, a bit more ambitiously and broad. I feel we should try and bring this into our lives at any point, not just towards the end of them. So I think this is a real chance for us as we're creating work today together to really push ourselves and be bold, be brave be as creative as we can possibly be without worrying what anyone else might think. I'm going to read this quote from George Graham as a little bit more inspiration for our writing today. And I think it's a really beautiful quote about being brave and about being bold. He said, yes, the skies are wonderful. I was only gradually led to my worship of the skies by sheer force of their beauty. If only I could have gotten to it years earlier. I think that says a lot. So let's be brave, let's be bold, let's get onto it. Instead of years later, let's get onto it right now. So for me, this painting is about the lesson Graham learnt about being as ambitious and unafraid as we can possibly be. Embrace what we are excited about, perhaps not what other people say. And like the image is Earth's awakening, perhaps it is also about the awakening within us, within Graham, of those energies to create our own lives as uniquely as we can. So. Let's think about our own lives right now. I'm gonna ask you to make some notes on yourself. First thing is gonna be some facts about yourself. What's just true about you? I'd like you to make some notes on recent stories and experiences you've had. Maybe some hopes for yourself. What do you hope for in the future? Tell me about some things you love doing. Where do you really connect with? What's the things that you most enjoy doing in the world? And maybe write down some things you're worried about. It's okay to be fearful too. This is a place to be really honest. So I'm gonna put all those prompts up on the screen. And again, pause the video, five or six minutes, make some notes on each of these full sentences, bullet points, whatever you need to generate some material for the poem we're gonna to put together.
So now you've got these two different blocks of text. One block of text about the painting, George Graham's Earth Awakening and your response to it, and a block of text about yourself using those prompts to reflect on your own life. Two distinctive pieces of writing. And we're gonna try and mix these up to create an interesting poem. You could do that really simply by cutting up the lines and mixing them together. Perhaps you found correlations between the painting and your own writing. It's really hard for me to tell you exactly what to do here. This is quite an intuitive and instinctive thing. A place to start might be with simply your favourite line from either section that you've written so far. Take that. Does something else feel like it fits in next? Perhaps that will simply lead you to a free write and something you want to expand on. Maybe you just like to write about the painting. Maybe you just like to write about yourself reflectively. It's really up to you. So again, pause the video, take some time, try and structure this bit of text into something that feels a little bit more like a poem. Okay, see you after this. Okay, so you've had these two blocks of text and hopefully by now you've made something that feels a little bit more poetic using either section or both sections combined in an interesting way. I'm going to read you my piece, which was definitely inspired by the painting, but of course, inevitably, it brought in my own life as well. Mine simply goes like this. Patterned explosions suggest a purpose, hidden behind the chaos of heat. Although I am watching an ending, there must be a good reason for it. The darker clouds swell up from below, threatening to obscure my view of this spectacle. I am honoured to witness the conclusion of something though wonder about a new beginning. My heart beats in the same way I imagine the sound of meteoric impact on Earth must feel. Thundering. I close my eyes. Darkness always comes anyway, which allows, of course, light to live the next day. OK, so a few editing tips for you. You've got this first draft of a piece, combining the two texts or free writing from one of them, however you've decided to approach this writing exercise. Editing is where a poem can be made from something pretty good and something excellent, or something excellent and something incredible. Editing is really important. I think the best editing tool we have is our own voice. So my first suggestion would be to read this poem out loud. How does it sound? Poetry was originally an oral art form. We used to sit around campfires and tell each other our stories, our histories, our legends, and that was spoken. So there's a natural cadence and rhythm to our voice that we can tap into. So reading it out loud is an amazing way to start editing your poem. What jars? What doesn't feel quite right? What feels a bit ugh, horrible coming out of your mouth? First, te first place you might want to think about editing is orally, reading out your poem. Thinking about your first and last lines is always really good. What are you starting your reader with or your listener? What are you ending with? What's the last thing you want them to hear? One thing with this particular exercise, I'd like you to think about the specificity of your images. If you're using metaphor or simile in particular, think about how that might land with somebody who's reading. Is it a bit general and generic? Is it even cliched? Or is it actually a specific and startling image you've created for yourself? Can you imagine that thing for real? So think about being specific over abstract and general. The last thing to think about is your poetic tools. If you're using simile or metaphor, rhyme or rhythm, does that make sense for this piece? Does it leave the right impression on the reader? So your two cornerstones really are hearing it out loud with your voice and then thinking about your audience. What impression does it leave on them? So give yourself some time to read back through and edit and see how the poem comes out after that. So that brings us to the end of our workshop for Hastings Museum and Art Gallery. I hope you've enjoyed thinking about working with George Graham's Earth Awakening, a beautiful painting in the collection, and you've been inspired by this workshop as well. If you have been and you've created a poem, I'd love to read these please do get in touch on social media with the museum. You can find Hastings Museum on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And you can find me on Dan Simpson Poet on the same platforms. I'll put all the links up underneath the video as well so you can get in touch with us really easily. 
As an extended exercise, if you want to do this again, simply find your favourite painting or photograph. Use another art form to be inspired and follow this process again. Responding to the art, responding to your life, and seeing how those two things come together to create a poem. Thank you so much for taking part in the workshop from Hastings Museum and Art Gallery. This has been part of Hastings Digital Museum, and I hope you've had fun with your creative writing and poetry today. Thank you so much. <laughs>